I knew what a Duong Watts malignant was because Duong Watts malignant was a punchline, a joke, a class of human civilization that we had all gamed out in training, an edge case so theoretically improbable it might as well be irrelevant. Duong Furyak's predictions of a universe overrun by his namesake had not, so far, panned out. Jutenheim was not far enough behind us, and I was not strong enough a person to do anything but push back. I don't think you can know that yet, I said. I don't think we have enough. Ship, Anya Hera said. Show them. Lachesis told me everything she knew. All she'd gleaned from her decades-long fall toward Mitanni, eavesdropping on the telemetry of the seed ship that had brought humanity here, the radio buzz of the growing civilization, the reports of the probes she'd fired ahead. I saw the seed ship's arrival on what should have been a garden world, a nursery for the progeny of her vat wombs. I saw catastrophe, a barren radioactive hell, climate erratic, oceans poisoned, atmosphere boiling into space. I watched the ship struggle and fail to make a safe place for its children, until in the end, it gambled on an act of cruel, desperate hope, fertilizing its crew, raising them to adolescence, releasing them on the world to build something out of its own cannibalized body. I saw them succeed. Habitation domes blistering the weathered volcanic flats, webs of tidal power stations, thermal boreholes like suppurating wounds in the crust, thousands of fission reactors beating hearts or uranium and molten salt. Too well, too fast. In 700 years of struggle on a hostile barren world, their womb-bred population exploded up toward the billions. Their civilization webbed the globe. It was a boom unmatched in human history, unmatched on the other seed ship colonies we had discovered. No Eden world had grown so fast. Interesting, I said, watching Matani's projected population, industrial output, estimated technological self-catalysis, all exploding toward some undreamt-of ceiling. I agree that this could be suggestive of a Duong Wat scenario. It wasn't enough, of course. Duong Wat's malignancy was a disease of civilizations, but the statistics could offer only symptoms. That was the terror of it, the depth of the cause, the simplicity. Look at what Lachesis has found. Anya Hera rose, took an insistent step forward. Look at the way they live. I spoke more wearily than I should have. This is going to be another Jutenheim, isn't it? Her face hardened. No, it isn't. I didn't let her see that I understood, that the words Duong Watt's malignancy had already made me think of the relativistic weapons Lachesis carried, and the vote we would need to use them. I didn't want her to know how angry it made me that we had to go through this again. One more time before we could go home. One more hard decision. Tien kept her personal space too cold for me. Frosted glass and carbon composite, glazed constellations of data and analysis. A transparent wall opened onto false color nebulae and barred galactic jets. At the low end of hearing, distant voices whispered in clipped aerospace phrasing. She had come from Haiti and from New Delhi but no trace of that twin childhood so rich with history had survived the journey here. It took me years to understand that she didn't mean it as insulation. The cold distances were the things that moved her, clenched her throat, pimpled her skin with awe. Anya Hera teased her for it, because Anya Hera was a historian and a master of the human, and what awed Thien was to glimpse her own human insignificance. Is it a Duong Watts malignant? I asked her. Do you think Anya Hera's right? Forget that, she said, shaking her head. No prejudgment. Just look at what they've built. She walked me through what had happened to humanity on Mitanni. At Lagos U, before the launch, we'd gamed out scenarios for what we called socially impoverished worlds, places where a resource crisis had limited the physical and mental capital available for art and culture. Tien had expected demand for culture to collapse along with supply as people focused on the necessities of existence. Anya Hera had argued for an inelastic model, a fundamental need embedded in human consciousness. There was no culture on Mitanni, no art, no social behavior beyond functional interaction in the service of industry or science. 